All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and let us do the good work for today. Uh, let me know in the text, please, if the voice is not clear to you. Um, I was looking for some pictures for scary creatures and uh, trying to understand the wisdom of Allah and the wisdom of His Prophet. And I really I get to a conclusion that Allah don't say things unless there is a reason for them. As an example, the dog is something Allah He hate very much. It is the most filthy, dirty creature. And for sure, Allah He knew best. You know, I mean, you cannot blame Allah for saying what He is saying. And when Muhammad He ordered to kill all the dogs in the Arabian Peninsula, the people start complaining, saying, "We need dogs." I mean, those are people who live in the desert and they need the protection of dogs. Dogs can alarm them from beasts. They can protect their sheep. And they can, you know, provide certain duty uh, for their animals. They can gather the sheep. They, can, they are very smart. But yet Muhammad, he insists that the dogs are very, very dangerous and we should kill them all. At the end, Muhammad, he have to compromise his hate against the dogs. And he agree, okay, we will let the dogs, which is not black and which is used for guarding only to stay alive. But if you are a black dog, then we have to kill you and you have no choice to survive. And Muhammad, he gave a very important reason. The black dog is the devil. And for sure, this is proven by science. According to certain study, that there is more than 5,000 and 5,000 million scientists from NASA, they made a study about dogs in the moon, and they found that dogs in the moon are very dangerous. Why? Because when you park in the moon, you cannot hear the sound of the dogs because it's an empty space. And for sure, this is a true story reported in Islamic magazine. The same story about George Bernard Shaw, who said the prophet, he can solve all the problems in the world while he's drinking his coffee. By the way, I don't think the prophet was drinking coffee at all. He was busy with 13 women and many slave girls for sex. What coffee we are talking about. So the Muslims, they try always to make you feel that Islam come with something amazing and something special and I see that Islam come with something very disgusting first of all dogs are very beautiful creatures yes you know dogs can bite you maybe but this is not because they are evil really I mean he is a creature who feel uh, he is being threatened too you know most of animals they do what they do because they feel it. They are, you know, you are a threat. It's not the opposite. Uh, uh, for sure, unless they are hungry and they want to eat. And as we know, I mean, usually dogs, they don't attack you to eat you. Unless there is no feed, uh, food around, you know. Uh, but a human do the same. You know, we kill animals to survive. So. I mean, if animals kill to, to survive and we kill to survive, what made them evil and made us good? However, dogs proving themselves to be very friendly and very good friend to human being and very loyal. And actually, if you go in the desert or in the jungle or anywhere, if you are by yourself, I am sure you prefer to have a dog with you. That will give you a lot of better security and you will feel better about what's going around you. But Muhammad, he insists that dogs are evil and dogs are bad. Now, the Quran, which is the topic for us today, made uh, many, many, uh, uh, actually all the creation which is exists in this earth. Anything does not agree with Muhammad should be killed. Not only the black dog because he is the devil. So the logic of Islam is, if you don't agree with Muhammad, you are the devil. 
and obviously Muhammad he have a problem with dogs I think because they can sense his bad energy dogs they have a special sensation for energy so if you have a bad energy you can feel it so there is one of two issues either Muhammad he hate them very much and they can feel that or Muhammad he gets scared terrified when he see them and they can feel that too uh, today our topic is about the Quran not about really what Muhammad said about dogs but I wanted to start here from speaking about the wisdom of Islam because Muslims they say that Muhammad is the best teacher and whatever he say he is the best to teach us what to do and Islam is a lifestyle and Islam actually is based on what Muhammad said not what Allah said you will see many things in the Quran said something in the Quran Muhammad he said the opposite the Muslim they follow what Muhammad said not what the Quran said so today we have our Skype open and we would like to invite the Muslims to call us and this is the challenge when you Muslims you say to us there is amazing things in the Quran is it really amazing wonderful or it's amazing stupid is it amazing um, science as you claim or it's amazing garbage is it amazing foolish or it's amazing smart so if you are a Muslim and you would like to call me feel free I believe everything in Islam is amazing rubbish and actually maybe this is an insult to rubbish to compare it with the Quran because rubbish can be recycled I mean even garbage we can make something good out of it but what we can made something good out of Quran as an example if we go in the Quran There's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of genie. Chapter what? Genie. But if we go and read in the Quran, there is tons of verses speaking about those creatures who they are genie, genie, the genie in the ball. And even Muhammad he invited the genies to convert to Islam as an example if you go to chapter 6 130 it says the following Quran was not sent only for mankind Quran is a book of the genie and the book of the human O assembly of jinn and man on men didn't their not come to you apostle from among you i mean hold on here hold on guys anyone notice here something weird in this verse let us see who of you is 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 thinking with me what is something weird in what we just read in this line oh assembly of jinn and men didn't there not come to you apostle from among you anyone can tell me what is the what is the crazy stuff Apo anyone can tell me what apostle among the jinn <laughs> okay that's a good one so we have a prophet you have Muslim prophet who came to the genie so we have a genie if you uh, let, let me see uh, let me see if I can find pictures drawing by Muslims about genies because Muslims they come with a lot of a drawing for genie by the way hold on just to show you how the Muslims they view those creatures which nobody saw nobody met nobody I mean it's just it's just a fiction but anyway let us see I will search in Google peace upon him And see what we can find. Jinn. Muslims, they come with tons of pictures. This is a jinn. This is a jinn. Uh, look at this gen actually this guy is handsome
Nice to meet you, buddy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so let me introduce to you Apostle Muhammad for the genie. Well, as long he is one of the jinn, he will look like them, right? The apostle will look like his people. So as long the Quran, they are saying to us that Allah He sent apostles to the genie. Well, I mean, here we go. This is the apostle Muhammad to the genie. Or whatever you want to call him, you want to call him Apostle uh, uh, Saleh, uh, Apostle, uh, I don't know, you, you give me a name for the prophet of the genie. I mean, genie, and look what the Muslims they come with with, uh, with names. I mean, uh, genie, this is a genie, this is all is done by Muslims. This is a genie, all right. So are those are genie as you see Muslim believe in them and they have apostles came to them Okay, like look at this genie here This is a genie Now I'm sure uh, This is amazing and uh, many of you today will see nice dreams. Let's change the pictures <laughs> We go back to the Quran so the Quran claim that there is apostles for man and genie. But hold on, the Quran here is using Arabic language, and the Quran is speaking in this Arabic language to genie and men. That's mean the genie they understand Arabic, and they are Arab. I never thought about myself as a genie, even if sometime I act like one. But now I understand I must be a genie. And genies are from my people, they are Arab, they speak Arabic. If you ever needed a translator to translate a speech between you and genie, please call me. As you see, they speak Arabic because the Quran is not speaking to them in English. This is a translation, as you know. It says here in Arabic, Ya ma'ashara jinna wal ins, alam ya'tikum rasulun minkum. You know, the, a people of genie and mankind. And look, Allah, he put the word genie first. So in order for the genies here to understand the Quran, they have to speak Arabic. And not only that. Muhammad, he claimed that even he was able to convert a bunch of genies into Islam. Uh, read this uh, this verse with me. The genie they will be judged in the judgment day because they are, you know, there is a Christian genie, there is Muslim genies, there is Hindu genie, there is atheist genies, there is a gay genie. I mean, there is genie from everything. And on the day when shall when shall gather them all together, O assembly of jinn. You took away a great part of mankind. What does that mean? And their friends from among the men shall say, Our Lord, some of us uh, both, uh, profited by others, and we have reached our appointed term, which thou didst appoint for us. He shall say, The fire is your await. To a bead in it, except as Allah is pleased, surely your Lord is wise and knowing. I don't know what is that is about. Do we have any Muslim can explain to us what's happening here? Well, what is that? You know, when the Muslim they say to us the Quran is amazing, I mean, I don't know what is amazing about it. And then you go and you open the interpretation for the Quran to understand what this is about. And you will find every Muslim scholar trying his best to give you an interpretation which doesn't fit with the other interpretation because they are just guessing. It's a genie talk, my friend. Look like we have somebody is trying to call. Uh... <clears throat> No, you can call only if you are a Muslim. Uh, 
Are you a Muslim? The one trying to call. If you are not a Muslim, don't call me. Don't waste my time. We are here. We want people to see a real debate between us as a Christians and between Muslims with respect, no insult. And if you are a Muslim, feel free to call us. If not, you know, there's no need. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really interested to hear your opinion as a Christian. You can leave a comment down there. If we try to understand this, let us see what this guy wants. Hello? Hello? Yes. Are you a Muslim, my friend? Hello? Yes. Are you a Muslim? Excuse me? Are you a Muslim? Yes, I'm a Muslim. All right. What do you think about the genie converting to Islam? Oh, this is absolutely not true. Not true. So what do you mean? Um, this this is a big lie. Who is the one who made the big lie? Um, this is our scholar. Okay, so the Quran doesn't say that uh, people the, convert to Islam. Yes. The Quran doesn't <laughs> say. <laughs> ah, this is you. Ah, okay, let me open the IP. This is Gigi Gigi. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> Stupid people. By the way, you are just making fun of your prophet. You know, you can call me again if you wish. No problem. I mean, the best, the best, the best comedy is Muslims defending their Islam. Uh, and at the same time, you obviously you have a mental issue. You have nothing to do except calling me and say "gg gg." <laughs> I'm sure your mother will be proud about you. You are accomplishing a lot. Uh, so the whole Quran giving us a stories about those, uh, you know, about those genies. And uh, you will notice that the Quran insists to repeat and speak about the genie in every, every place in the Quran. And not only that, like I find it very weird that in chapter 7, verse 179, the genie, they will go to hellfire. I don't know if any of you understand why this is weird. Anyone knows why? Why this is will be weird. Because the jinn, the genie supposedly are made of fire. So how you want to send somebody who is made of fire to fire? Are you threatening the fire to be burned by fire? I mean, I understand if you say to them, I will send you to Alaska. <laughs> if you say I am going to send you to the North Pole as a punishment for you, but you are made of fire and yet I will punish you with fire. If we go in the Quran in different verse, we will find the following. Chapter 50. Five, verse number 15 so the jinn are made of a flame of fire and yet we wouldn't send them to fire to punish them can we punish fire by fire can we burn the fire by fire if you have my books like the new book, uh, Six and Allah, you will see a story about a guy, he noticed that his wife, she is having sex with the genies. And the proof of that, around her vagina, there was a fire while she is doing, having sex with the genie. Let us say her bushes cut in fire. This is why you should not have bushes there. <laughs> Be careful, my friend. 
be careful <clears throat> be aware right uh, okay we have abdul here uh, I think this is the same kid. Yeah. So, as you see, Islam is kind of a mix of fictions and madness and stupidity. And uh, there's a creature as nobody see and nobody knows and they are made from fire and then we want to punish them by fire and then the genie they listen to the Quran and then they accepted the Quran and then they believe in the Quran and then they they became a Muslims I mean it's really amazing how they are created but if you go and search about the genie you will find that the the word even jinn is exist long before Muhammad this is coming from an inheritance of many fabulous stories fairy tales exist before us now right uh, you are not a man let us see maybe this is Gigi when I call again let me I will open my uh, IP finder and see maybe I think it's a Gigi how are you Gigi Hello. how are you Gigi it's what you are Gigi aren't you no no what, you, you what are gg my friend it's, sing for us gg please come on i just call you just to sing for us gg say gg gg what what is that it's, it's stupid you know I, I let you call me to say to us gg gg so we can laugh at you and you don't want to do it so why i want to talk to you <laughs> i see your ip you idiot anyway uh he created the jinn of a flame of fire and then the flame of fire they listen to the Quran and they believe in the Quran I mean here you notice the amazing thing about the Quran even genie in the ball he heard the Quran and he accept Islam in different verse in the Quran it says the following In chapter 72, verse number one, say it has been revealed to me that a party of jinn listened and they said, Surely we have a wonder, we have heard a wonderful Quran. <laughs> oh boy, I like that. Oh boy, Muslims. Muhammad, he was, Allah told him, he sent him Jibreel. And Jibreel told him, Muhammad, hello Muhammad, Habibi Muhammad. Habibi Muhammad. When you recite the Quran, Habibi, this is Benjamin Netanyahu speaking to you, Habibi. When you recite the Quran, Habibi, the genie, even the genie, Habibi, they go crazy. I noticed that the genie in Hamas, they go crazy. So Habibi Muhammad recite the Quran again, Habibi, and the genie will go crazy and will set it down. So Muhammad trained his people that Allah told him that when he recite the Quran, a party of the genie, for sure those are Democrat, they listened and they said, surely we have heard a wonderful Quran. I mean, what do you want more amazing than this? Hmm? Do we have any genie in the chat? Be honest with me. If you are a genie in the chat, give me one. So we can play for you Quran and you tell us your opinion about the Quran. Hmm? What's wrong with you, Muslims? I mean, you believe in this? The genie, they listen to the Quran? Like what? 
it. What, what verse they listen to and they like it? Like one about the end, she said to the end, hide otherwise, so a man will crush you. Or about the flying carpet, or about the seven sleepers and their dog. Mm -hmm. Which one made the genie go crazy? And as always, Muhammad he make up stories, and not only by the way he says here I say say to them I revealed like a party of the jinn they listened and they said wonderful Quran Muhammad even claimed that he saw them for real. If we go in the hadith, let me find the hadith. Okay, here. I ask Alqama Ibn Ibn Mas'ud was the present with the Messenger of Allah, peace upon him, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, about on the night of the jinn. Oh. The night of the jinn. The night of the jinn when the prophet he met them. What? The prophet he met the genie? Breaking news, CNN, fake news. Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, he had a conference meeting with the genie. And it was a very hot meeting because the genie are made of fire, as you remember. To the point the prophet he had to wear a welding mask and a clothing to resist fire. The story continue. One night, one night, we were in the company of the com in the company of the messenger of Allah, and one night we missed him. We searched for him in the valleys and the hills and said he has either been taken away by the jinn. What the heck? What the heck? And now I know why my mom, she said to me when I was a kid, don't go alone. The genie will take you. The Muslims, they were thinking that most likely the genie, they kidnapped the prophet. Or has been secretly killed. Look at this conspiracy. We spent the worst night which people could ever spend. When it was down, down, we saw him coming, which means Muhammad, from the side of Harry. Hmm. I see. Oh. I'm so happy the prophet is back. I was really worried that he will not show up again. He, the narrator, reported. Is that Gigi? Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi, CP? Yes. Hi, this is me, CP. Yeah. Hi, this is uh, Kimberly. Thank you for uh, accepting my call. Right. First of all, I would like to thank you for all your videos because they're super helpful. Thank you. And uh, I know you don't like to go off topic, but I have two questions for you. Okay. Can uh, we make them? Can we make them three? Because I like a trinity. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sure, we can make them three. All right. <laughs> okay. So first one is um, Surah three, verse fifty-four. Okay. Um, it talks about. Allah being the best of deceivers mm. but as you taught me that translation is sometimes very different mm. so I wanted to ask you what makar means in this verse well you know we can go right now to the Islamic inter uh, uh, dictionary 
And if yes. the Muslims will say that Christian Prince is not giving a correct translation, then they cannot say that to their own dictionary, correct? Correct, yes. So if we go to the Islamic dictionary, we'll find, I will type the word Mecca in the front of your eyes. Okay. This is in the screen, I'm typing it. One Mecca. Second. Okay. Yes. And this is the translation. Can you read? Okay. Yes. Uh... One second. Part of the body between. Maybe it's not coming yet to you. Oh, okay. Cheat, deceive, delude, double cross, dupe. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah, and this is clear. and this is the Islamic dictionary. I have nothing to do with it. And this is not my translation. I just type the word, and you see here the word in in the front of you in the dictionary. Here, yes, translation exactly. of the meaning of Makar in Al Ma'ani yes. English uh, Arabic dictionary. And not only that, okay, here it says, here the Muslim they try to make it look nicer. So they say, when it's come to the Quran, they say, God plan. But yes, exactly. We just said here the that the word means deceive. So God the plan is to deceive. So from the plan, okay, but uh, here, Quran word, a plot, you see it? Yes. Plotted. Yes. And, and you know yes. what, what does that mean, right? Uh, yes. And here, uh, our, uh, I don't know how to say this word correctly. Arshinis. Is that correct? Arshinis. Deception. Deception. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's about all is that about deception. It's all about the same. And the fraud and etc. As you see, you know. Yeah. Fraud. Yes. Well. The the tricky thing is whenever I try to discuss this with uh, people around me, they always tell me, "Oh, the translation is bad." And this I agree. I agree. Translation is bad. The translation is not a true. The translation they should say clearly the word deception. But however, we can pre we can prove it easy. You see, yes. when when we go in the Quran, uh, and the Muslim try to um, to give their own translation, any verse, you know, we search for it. Uh, it says here in chapter 7 verse number 99 okay let's see what this is verse is saying okay well do they then feel secure from allah plan this is the translation all right but we yeah. just saw in the dictionary it says that the word makar mean fraud and deception so here in order to protect the, the quran to make it look nicer they translate the word deception as a plan uh, you see so okay. I agree the translation is, is fabricated if we change the translator this is uh, this is Shakir let us change different translation um, let us see English let us see this one Do they feel themselves secure from retribution, retribution of, of of God? What does that mean? I don't know what this word means actually, and I never used it before. What does that mean? Retribution? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. My English is not as that good as well. So now so. we are two. Two more. We can play cards. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go and see uh, big time. I think it. I think it's something about revenge. Mm. Here. Uh, scheme or scheme, you see it? Uh, yes, yes, so look how they how, how they play with the word because simply they are trying to change. I mean, why why every one of them he gives us different word, different meaning? Yeah, because simply they don't want to use the word deception. This is the whole point. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, the word makar appear in different way in the Quran, not necessarily as, as makar, as an example, uh, appear as the word yudil. Here, if you okay. see, if you see chapter 16, verse number 26, this is the same word we are talking about. Yes. Okay. But you will notice here, because this is not talking about Allah, they say, those before them plotted, so Allah struck foundation of their buildings. Okay. So here yes. you see the word makar, the same word is translated as a plotted. And plotted is you doing something secretly, right? And you know, yeah. deceiving people about what you want to do to them, people. right? Yes. Uh, so the Muslims always they try to fabricate the meaning, 
and but they cannot uh, uh, they cannot really do a good job anyway because uh, all what we need to do you know uh, yeah um, you it's know. it's very smart yeah but it doesn't work because the Quran the Quran says it clearly that Allah is the one who deceive everybody if you remember I have a debate with the Muslim Abdul and we ask him about when when he said uh, about the hadith about Adam that Adam he was debating with Musa's and yes. uh, and Musa's uh, he said to Adam do you blame me for what Allah he wrote for me and he said so Allah he made uh, Adam commit sin and then Allah will punish him for the sin that he uh, uh, he he committed, you know, which is yeah. the plan of Allah. This is like Thank you me. know. So he said, "Well, Allah, yes, I, I hear Adam is a victim because Allah he wanted to be known. Uh, so Allah yeah. here he deceived Adam, you know, because he is the yeah. one who made him commit the sin. The story yeah, is very simple. He wrote simple. it before it happened. Yeah, not only he wrote it. You see, it's, uh, when I wrote, when I write a scenario for you." I'm writing a scenario of two things scenario of your fate and your and your and how I can deceive you mm. you know because yeah. here how Adam was able to do why he did that because simply Allah he made him do it how he made him do it he deceived him all right yeah. the faith yeah. here the faith here is nothing but a plan of deception so I write for you a plan which nobody can get away from it and this plan including how I can deceive you so you commit sin and then you ask me for forgiveness and then I forgive you all right yeah so the story here is very yeah. clear that Allah is the deceiver because Adam here is not the one to blame as you see this is Muhammad himself saying that uh, uh, Adam he confuted Musa's Adam confuted Musa's about this debate and how how Adam he confuted Musa's simply he said to him do you blame me do you blame me yeah uh, for action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before my creation so what Allah he wrote for me that he will deceive me he will fool me and he will make me do this so later he can punish me or I will yeah. ask for forgiveness, forgiveness so yeah. Adam saying to Musa you cannot blame me for the sin I did because at the end of the day this is this is the deception of Allah <laughs> God's plan you know? Allah's plan yeah <laughs> This is the plan of Allah to deceive me and to make me do so. So as you see, that the deception of Allah starts from the first man and will not end anywhere until until he deceive all mankind. This is the devil. Yes. And here, this is against the nature of God because you see, God supposedly he will punish you for a sin you did, not a sin he made you do. Exactly. For this is not justice because if you are the one who made me commit sin. Then you are going to punish me for what you made me do, and I have no choice to do or not. That's stupid. That's not fair. That's not justice, no. and this is not from God. And it's not merciful either. It's it's evil. It's pure evil. You know, like yeah. you're you're, yeah. you're playing for me. I am a person who have no ability to stop you from making me doing things, and then you punish me for what I did. Yes. You know exactly. That is a pure evil. It is well. Thank you for your answer. It's very clear, and it's gonna help me. You're welcome. I'm sure. Um, can I ask you just one more question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, about Surah five, verse forty-five. Five forty-five. Okay. What about it? Yes. Um. So the this verse does it say something about that <clears throat> forgiving is better than revenge or retaliation? Uh, you see. Uh, you said uh, 545, right? Yes, okay. This is also a question about translation and uh, uh, what the actual verse in Arabic means. Yeah, uh, first of all, here there's nothing about, uh, about uh, um, it's not just revenge, it's a stupid revenge. Because when you say to me, uh, uh, a soul for a soul, eye for an eye, nose for a nose, ear yes. for an ear, tooth for a tooth. Uh, shouldn't you tell us what nose you are talking about? <laughs> to make it simple for you. Yeah, that's to true. Yeah. To make it simple for you. Yeah. If we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran say the following: that the free for the free, and the slave for the slave, and women for the women. Chapter two, verse one seventy-eight. Yeah. Okay. So now we understand the other verse you are that you are asking me about what this is about. In the case of murder, 
and there's a book it's called Muatta Malik it's full of cases about this you can go and search you will see in the Muatta Malik says it clearly that in the case of murder if a free man kill a slave man the free man will not be killed a slave yeah. man will be killed so now what the Quran saying in the case of murder free for the free which means if a white man kill a white man Arab man then we kill a white man yeah. okay but and if a free if a free, a free man kill a slave man a slave will go for the slave so here the Quran is a stupid book so tooth for a tooth but the tooth of who not my tooth yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if I am a free man and I am a white man my tooth will not go I will I will I will somebody is going to break the tooth of my of, of my slaves or I have to pay your money to the owner because he lost now his 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 uh, his slave he lost a tooth you know so the, the the way Muslims they try to understand Muhammad here trying to understand or trying to copy from Musa's yes you know let's say this is for the for the Jews yeah but here actually Muhammad no actually Muhammad he practiced for, for himself not only for the Jews he practiced it for himself let me show you something hold on let me um, let us see we open the hadith because that's what I heard someone um, tell me is that yeah. oh this verse is actually not for for the Muslims but it's for the people of the of the book so talking about the Jews and not for the Muslims you know, it, first of all this is very funny of him to say so because if this is not for the Muslims and this is for the people of the book but he forgot the one who gave that is Allah anyway right exactly That's, yeah so Muslims they don't they aren't very naive I mean when they answer sometimes I wonder if a Muslim is answering from his nose or from his toes they don't use their <laughs> brain for a second so you yeah. doesn't matter who said that and say that to who still this is your God Allah saying that so this is a stupid and as long as you agree that this is stupid it doesn't afford you from he is saying it to the Jews or he is saying it to the Christians. Uh, if we go in the hadith, because it's the same God for them. Yeah, yeah. because as long as it's from from your God, I mean, what the what what difference is going to make anyway? So if we go in the yeah. hadith, I just found it. It took me a little bit. Yeah. Um, here, it says Malik said, "There is no retaliation healed against a free man by a slave for an injury." Do you see it? Uh, yes, it's appearing now, Okay, yes. so if a free man broke the tooth of a slave, the Quran says, okay, tooth for a tooth. But to yes. tooth of who? Not the tooth of the free man, because there's no retaliation against the free man. Um, you see? Oh, wow. I haven't even looked at it that way, but yes. yes the slave... Right. The slave is killed for a free man when he intentionally murder him. So if a slave, he killed a free man, then a slave will be killed. Yes. Okay. But it's not the opposite. The free man, no. the free man is not slain for a slave. Do you see it? Yep. So the tooth uh, tooth for tooth eye for an eye this is about a society of slaveries and masters so if you are a master you know you will not be killed for torturing or killing a slave and if you are a slave you will be killed for killing a master and in the same time if you cause an injury for a slave you will not be uh, hold accountable for 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 your act uh, simply at the end of the day um, the equality of law here is about between the free the 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 same kind this is why the quran here yeah. the quran divide the people to three kind of people there is women and men and slaves the women and the men free women yeah. for a free women or a slave women for a slave women but however i believe here the, the women for women it's about the women by gender it's not it's, it's which is a free and then slave for a slave it doesn't matter if it's a slave woman or a slave no. man you know so that yeah. there's a three generation or three uh, level of mankind in Islam there's a free man he will be killed for a free man and there's a slave will be killed for a slave and there's a woman will be killed for a woman and this is not just this is stupidity I agree yeah right. but you know the funny thing is that they will say Oh, this hadith is uh, in contradiction with the Quran, so it's where? false. Where? 
Anyway, anyway, the Quran is saying that. Well, the Quran well, in front that's, of us. that's the argument they always use. No, no, they cannot. The Quran, the Quran saying, the Quran. is it the Quran in front of us saying a free for the free, slave for a slave? <laughs> where is the contradiction? Uh, yes. You know, where is the contradiction? Yeah. There's no contradiction. This is uh, it. They can say whatever they want. You know, this is the, oh, the, the, the denial is just to run away from, uh, yeah. uh, you know, like, like, you know, Muslims is the same as uh, the ostrich bird. Uh, when this bird see a danger coming, like a wolf, etc., because she's stupid, what she do, she 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 bury her her head in the sand. Yeah. And then she think that because she don't see him, he don't see her. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? So then the yeah, wolf he yeah. grab her actually easier because now she is just useless. She cannot defend herself because she buried her head. So this is how silly they are. They bury their head, and there's some, something is called uh, uh, this is contradiction. We don't take it. The whole Islam is contradiction. As an example, if you don't take anything, is contradiction to the Quran. The Quran says you do muta. Why you don't say okay, we're gonna do muta? Yeah. Hypocrites, you know. Yeah. yeah so yeah, when they yeah, want, they say contradiction. In anything contradict the Quran, we will not take it. The second we say to them, what about the muta? You know. Do you yeah. do do you do ten times breastfeeding for adult? That's crazy. No, no. Anyway, you know they can say whatever they want, but people, you know, we are laughing, and people are leaving Islam. Yes. They like it or not? <laughs> yes, yes. No, I agree. I agree. But um, so last question because you like the Trinity. So mm -hmm. the third question. Okay. Um, it's just one thing that um they always give as an argument. Uh, for example, for Surah Nine, mm. they always say, "Oh, but that's." Uh, only in that time when it was war or during wartime and it, it doesn't apply to to these days or to now mm. what would you say to that well um, first of all even if this is for that time that means Muhammad is an evil man because why you are saying that it was for that time unless it is disgusting yeah secondly what is the proof as long there are people who say anything could predict the Quran we don't accept it, right? Yeah. Where in the Quran it says that this is for that time? Yeah, that's a very good question. Same time, isn't it Muhammad? He said in the hadith, many places. Uh, uh, I've been ordered uh, to fight mankind until they uh, say there is no God but Allah and there's no prophet yeah. but Muhammad. He didn't say the yeah. Arab around me. He didn't say it's I've been ordered to fight mankind. Mankind, yeah. yeah. So, and all, not some, not a few. Yeah. I have, I have been commanded that should fight against the people till, and actually, translation is not good because in Arabic it says Jamian, all of them, until mm -hmm. there is nobody except saying uh, there is no God but Allah. So the duty have nothing to do with the with the uh, what time. The duty of fighting is until they declare or declare that there's no God but Allah. You see the condition? The condition is not yeah. about this stuff yeah. fighting me. It's not about, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's about, and by the way, in Islam, just for, for those who not know, in Islam, if you don't accept Islam, you are waging war against Allah. Mm, you see? Yeah. Because people, they might say to you, well, in Islam, it says, you know, uh, uh, fight those who fight you. Yes, exactly. But, but the second you say Muhammad is not a prophet, you are fighting Allah. This is why you see in the Quran, if you go to chapter five, you know, as long as you mentioned to me chapter five, you give if you go yeah. to chapter five, verse number fifty-one, it says, Take not the Christians and Jews who want to take you as a friends and protectors. Exactly. Okay? Yes. So they are not fighting you because there's no way, there's no way they want to take you as a friend and they are your enemy. I yeah. mean that, that would be funny, right? Like we are enemies, but you yes. say that as we friend. So they want to take you as a friend, but Allah reject that. Why? For they are the enemy of Allah. Mm. You know. But then they will say, uh, they will come up with the verse that says there is no compulsion in religion. No, this is a this is a verse that says the opposite. Actually, this verse saying mm -hmm. that the a group of of people they were saying we will not let our children to convert to Islam. Muhammad he was saying to them, you cannot force your children not to convert to Islam. Not the not the opposite. Oh. You see, they, they they use verses just to fool you when it is totally the opposite. It's Muhammad saying you cannot force your children not to convert to Islam. Otherwise, uh -huh. otherwise, here we go. 
as long they are saying this then they should not kill anyone leave Islam yeah you know yeah so why somebody leave Islam and we kill him but but that's what the translation says though what translation that's what no no that's uh, about... it's okay the translation is saying that but if in order to understand it we go and see the story yeah the story behind it is very clear that he was training them you cannot force your children not to convert to Islam but not the opposite mm. you know yeah uh, That's amazing. Uh, you see in different verses, as an example. Let's see. There's tons of verses actually uh, support what we are saying. And you know, the most important the action of Muhammad, I mean. <laughs> In chapter 8, yes. verse number 39, what Muhammad he want? Fight them until the religion became only for Allah. Yes, and if, very and, clear. And if they confer if they accept Islam, then don't don't fight them. Yeah. Hmm? What is the so what is the condition? Read it carefully. And fight with them until there's no more persecution. What is the persecution? By the way, it doesn't say persecution, it says fitna. Fitna. This is a lie when they say persecution. Mm -hmm. Until there is no more fitna. What fitna? Fitna is people don't want to believe in God, which is Allah, or don't want to practice Islam. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah. If you accept Islam, that's it. We don't fight you. What is what is the what well, what is the reason for the war? The verse saying that clearly. Until you know, and, and they say it. In the translation, let, let us change the translator, and you will see how the translation change. Just to show you the, yes. the the lies Muslims they do. This is translation of Shakir. Let us go to uh, oh, translation English translation. What is that? I never heard of the translation. It's called translation translation. <laughs> oh, this is a different language. Hold on, I don't know what is that. Okay, let's see. Um, Yusuf Ali. Let us say Yusuf Ali. Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, until there's no tomb, tomblet. What tomblet mean? Tomblet. Let me search. I, I think my screen is very. Uh, it's late a little bit. I will search Google. Okay. Uh, confused. Until there's no confusion. All the hair never. Uh, uh, Is it chaos or something? Chaos, yeah, chaos. So here we go. Yeah. So the chaos, okay, why would they chaos? Because there's people who have different belief, and we, we will not allow that. So no, 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 it's no. not it's not the persecution as etc. And here he add the word or oppression, which is not really exist in the Quran. There's no there's no word oppression exists here. They add it. And then mm -hmm. and there prevail justice and faith of Allah altogether and everywhere. <laughs> So wow. the fact it's the opposite actually. The Muslim they are saying yes. that the other one is under under persecution, but the fact they are persecuting others and they are forcing themselves on others until we fight them until there is no religion but Islam. Yes. You know, and each it's each time tricky. each time you 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 change the translator, you will see a different translation, different words, different meaning because Muslims. Uh, look here. Look at this. This this is this is different translation. Look how the translation changed suddenly. So fight them till all oppositions end. Do you see it? Yeah. So they make it look like they are how are opposition them and they have to defend them. Yeah, how opposition was oppression. Yeah. If I oppose you in your religion, this is not oppression for you. No. So fight them till there is all opposition end and obedience. Is all holy God to Allah? Okay, so yeah. and, and by the way, it says here the religion will be all became to Allah. So everybody became Muslim. So we fight them until everybody became a Muslim. If yeah. we go in the hadith, that should support that with one, one more hadith. You will see uh in this hadith as an example, and that will explain Islam to us. Quran chapter 3, verse 110, it says that the best the best of mankind are the Muslims. No, Why they yes. are the best of mankind? Because simply they have a duty, mm. and the duty is read with me carefully. The verse 
you true Muslims are the best people ever raised for man up for mankind means the best of the people for the people as you bring them with the chain on their necks till they embrace Islam Wow can we make That's... it more clear more than this no so this is the duty it's not the, it's not them fighting you you have a duty as a Muslim to fight them and bring them how somebody will bring, will come to you with the chain around his neck unless you go conquer him enslave him them. you know yeah. torture him because the slavery is about you being surrendering for somebody and you became his slave as simple as that yeah and he put a leech on your neck and that is supposedly a holy duty for every Muslim to force you to convert to Islam and actually this is how they converted a lot of people you know because now I you are a slave and they will torture you because they will torture you more so if you want us to be merciful for you as a slave well convert to Islam we will treat you better than a slave is not a Muslim yeah because now well, you will have more rights yes exactly well that's what I found out after reading the Quran is that the Islam is merciful among them their own believers but not to people outside correct. of the religion correct yes yeah it's very sad all right well it's but very sad you. we are destroying it and don't worry yeah. be happy if this garbage we we are here to clean okay. it thank you thank you and uh thank you for all your videos and uh, for um, all your answers it's very uh, please very uh, uh, don't forget before you leave uh, to speak to the secretary because I am the same as the Prophet Muhammad I don't speak in private unless you pay me uh, okay you know well, okay good you know yes. that you know the Prophet he said that right yes yes so you yeah, have you yes, have to pay the I Prophet yeah so uh, please uh, don't forget <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, thank you, my friend. Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He will not talk to you unless you pay him. So, if you speak to the prophet, you have to be aware now that your bill is going growing, you know. Anyway, do we have any Muslim trying to call us? We go back to the genie story, right? We go back to the genie. Um, we will. Okay, we are here. Uh, she took us away from our topic. It's better next time, please. If you wait until we finish this, and then if we are done, then we can uh, we can answer your questions. All right. So we were talking about Muhammad. The Muslims they thought he was kidnapped by the genie. And by the way, this is one of the reasons I always take my gun with me wherever I go. I don't want to end kidnapped by genie, especially if they are women. Now imagine yourself kidnapped by a bunch of genies and they are women. Oh boy. Oh man. And all those genie women, I mean, they are genie, man. They are in fire, literally, and they want to rape you. They have wanna, they want to have sex with you. Because in case you do not know, the Muslim believe that Muslim men and women, they can have sex with the genie. You know what I mean? I am not making things up. You can go right now and search on Google and search for sex with genie. Muslims believe in that literally. Real, real sex, you know. If you don't believe me, you can get my book, uh, Sex and uh, Allah, and you will find a lot of stories, which is very, very nice stories. It's good for before, before sleeping. Now, Maybe later after we finish this, we can go and search for some stories about sex with genie. Or maybe now, I don't know. Let's see if I can sort of find a good story. How I, if there's if there's any one of you here is too young? I'm the only young here, I think. I'm the only one at 17 here. Uh, all of you are a bunch of uh, old people. I feel sorry for you. Hmm. Okay, let us see. Um, let's see. 
I, I hate to mention something without proof because the Muslim they will say, "Well, he's lying." You know, it's not doesn't say that. Well, um. okay. I'm just trying to find you a story we can read because some of them they are too much I mean too much information all right can a jinn have sex with my wife this is a website Islam uh, stock exchange can a jinn have sex with my wife is this hadith authentic when a man has intercourse with his wife and does not name Allah the jinn coil around his uh, your 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 I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly and has intercourse along with him so my friend I have a bad news for you you especially Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhas, atheists. I'm really, really sad for you. You think you are having sex with your wife alone, but the fact you are having threesome. I'm really, really sorry for you, Mr. Genie, because you forgot to say Bismillah. The genie will round her himself around your penis. And the genie will be doing that again, that again, that again, then, then, that again, that again, that again, then, then, that again, that again, that again, then, then, that again, 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 I mean, this is very, very dangerous. And we as a human, my friend, we should be enlightened by the wisdom of the prophet, peace upon him. The prophet, he don't say something unless it's very truthful. And because, my friends, I'm worried about you, especially for those who make donation. Those who don't make donation, don't listen to my advice because you don't deserve it. I am like Muhammad. I advise only those who make donation. Those who make donation, please, from now on, please, not please, please, from now on, say Bismillah before you have sex. In order to protect your wife and your penis. And this is, I mean, this is advice from me to you. Hello? Hi, how are you doing, Christian Prince? I'm all right, my friend. How are you? I'm good. How's, how's life? How's things been going? Life is good, um, and wives are in vacation. <laughs> yeah. uh, this GD this episode is funny. It's funny. Okay, what do you want to say to us, my friend? So, yeah, just quickly, brother. Um, I've had some Arabic people. You know, the other day when you said Allahu Akbar meant Allah and Akbar, yeah? Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on that just quickly? Because I've been trying to talk to some Muslims, evangelize to them, and they're like, mm. they're saying to me. Um, First of all, uh, uh, Akbar yeah. in Arabic, you, you speak Arabic, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Akbar mean uh, bigger. Yeah, bigger. Okay, great, so, high, so yeah. you know, uh, uh, one of the names of Allah is Al Azim. So if you want to say Allah Al Azim, say Al uh, Allah is the great. So what is Akbar then? Bigger? So in order to I compare, know. in order to say Akbar, it's if the, the statement in Arabic, Akbar, is to compare between two things, correct? Okay, yeah, yeah. It yeah, cannot yeah. be, it cannot be a description. Allahu Akbar, you know, it's about comparing. Now, if you go in the Quran, let us go yeah. here. You will see the word Akbar mentioned in the story about Abraham. Yeah. What Abraham he said, he said, This is my Lord, this is Akbar. Okay. 
Because mm-hmm. I've heard, I've heard, you know, I've heard even my father, many people say, yeah. Allah wa, wa Akbar, Allah wa Akbar. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even say, no, Hold on, let us Allah wa Akbar. As long as you speak yeah. Arabic, you do not need too much uh, uh, explanation in yeah. English. What he yeah. said, he said, The Shams, this is my, this is my God, this is Akbar. Okay. So there is the Arab, the Arab, the same as many pagan nations, they have many gods. One of them yeah. is the sun god and the moon god. So uh, I don't know if you grow up in the Middle East, you like when when we have rain and sun in the same time, they say that the uh, the uh, uh, the Satan is beating his wife. He's beating his wife. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They say stupid things. Like yeah. that, uh, the moon god is the god of Muhammad. The sun god was the god of the Arab, the other 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 people. So what Muhammad okay. he came, he came with Tawheed to unite the two big gods, Allah and Akbar. So Akbar, as you see, he said, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar. Hada yes, Rabbi, yes, yes, Hada yes. Akbar. So Hada Akbar, which is the sun. Now Akbar here either is going to be, it is bigger, the Muslim they translate it as a greater, which is false, or uh, you know, because here this is a planet, it cannot be a great by uh, value. Same time, the yeah. God of Islam, one of his name is Al-Azim. Al-Azim means great. So there's no point to say Akbar if it's mean great. Because Al-Azim means uh, great, yeah. correct? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. So this definitely, is one of the yeah. 99 names of Allah. So what Akbar mean? This is why when they say, they don't say Allah Akbar, they say Allahu Akbar. Yeah, because there's... Yeah. A, there's Allah because Allah. Muhammad is uniting between the God Allah and the God Akbar. This is why you see Muhammad he forbid the the the, the sun God was always the enemy of of the Arab. Why? Because the sun destroy uh, their water, uh, destroy their yeah. their animals. It's a it, you know they are desert people. They don't like the sun. You know. And also CP, thank you for that information. I appreciate that. So basically. Yeah. Um, you know, on top of the mosque, they've got the moon, the crescent moon, and the star. Wasn't this like a pagan? Pagan? Um... Everything is pagan. Everything in front of us is pagan. Look what Muhammad he said. And here, yeah. uh, Muslim they try to avoid to translate some of the translation. The Prophet stood up beside uh, the pulpit and pointed his finger toward the east and said, "Affection are there. Affection are there from the side of the head of Satan coming out." Okay. And then he says, the side of the sun. Okay? Mm. So mm. the God of Muhammad is the good God who is in charge of the God of the sun. This is why the Arab, you know, you know that the Arab, they believe that there's a three daughters of Allah and they are yeah. Al-Lat and Al-Uzza, right? What can they, why, how can they get out of that? That's what I don't understand. It's in the Quran. He said that obviously he got tricked and it was satanic or whatever. How can they get out of that? Like, I don't understand. Well, you need to, uh, if you read with me here, if you ask, yeah, like, even, even there is some naive Christian, they say, no, the Quran says, don't worship the moon, don't worship the sun. Yes, the moon is not the God. The moon, there's a God of the moon, is not the moon. The Lad yeah. Al Uzza and Manat, they are the three daughters of a marriage between the God of the moon and the God of the sun. Sheesh, All right. Yeah, yeah. So after they had sex together, they have three daughters, Alat and Al Uzza and Manat, and those are yeah. three goddesses in charge of things. So when when uh, when uh, 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 like as an example, if you go in the Hadith, you will see Abu Bakr. He says, "Wamsos badr Alat," which means go and suck the clitoris of Alat. That's mean a lot a lot was yeah. the goddess of sex and it have a clitoris You know what I like what you exposed as well in Arabic the meanings Translated into English are not the same. This is what I'm saying. Well, this is the point of knowing language Otherwise, they can deceive you and here you will notice that here we notice it says a lot Al Uzza Al does not mean the Al mean God so Al Uzza, God Uzza, Al Lat, God Lat. Manat does not have Al before it because simply this is the God of death. So yeah. uh, uh, Allah is the same. Allah, Al Lah. Lah is the name of the God of Islam. Al is 
the word mean God so Muslims most of them they are copy paste they don't know I mean they believe in what they've been told and that's it generation after generation and they copy yeah. paste but nobody really have knowledge well thank you and also um, I think there was some Bible prophecy there was apparently that Mecca got swarmed with um, locusts you know, you know these insects I, I don't want to go into those uh, prophecy my friend because sometimes yeah. people they make uh, they make something fit for something they because we don't like it so we say this is a prophecy about Mecca. i don't i don't want to go there you know and also, because also first, of you, all, first of all first of all first of all mecca is attacked by cockroaches every every year it's not something new you know okay yeah okay. every year every okay. year and very and uh, and uh, uh and not only that it's a flood by the sewage and garbage and etc so this is nothing new uh so the, but people you know i mean uh, people are weird they try to make a prophecy fit with certain like the, uh, I, I can go now and search for a verse in the bible and say this is a prophecy about trump yeah you true, know what I mean? true. some people are silly i don't want to go there so let's let us yeah. be, let us be smart and let us uh, focus on something important or real and not not, yeah. not try to make uh, uh, uh we, we don't want to do what the muslims do the muslims yeah, they try yeah. to find the prophecy in their prophet words and they try to make it yeah. they try to Solomon. clothe it clothe it in something yeah. happening around us so if a christians yeah. want to do the same that's mean they became silly the same as the muslims no 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 true 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 right. also like um i've got a testimony to tell you about this is a part my friend of i want to go back to my topic i apologize i answered yeah. you but i have a topic yeah yeah yeah. That, yeah that's it go on get, get going man thank you so much man please thank go you. On to thank you, thank, thank, you. thank you thank you Bye. please guys don't call me now until i finish my topic and I'm, I'm, I'm shy to say to you I don't want to really answer you now because we have a topic to finish all right all right so please don't call me about any topic and if you are a Christian don't call me for now please are we learning guys this is the difference between us and Muslims we have always to speak honesty and we don't want to make Islam look like a religion of the devil and you know say something it's not there okay you could uh, you know just say it as it is this is what Islam we say Islam what it is we don't want to close Islam with something is not there and you know if the lotus or the the cockroach is attacking the Kaaba for me this is the proof nothing really it's not the reason for me to believe the Kaaba is a pig in place what if tomorrow butterfly they attack the Kaaba so we will say the Kaaba is a holy place you know what I mean the Muslims they have they have a silly mind they are desperate to find uh, uh, a proof of their religion so they say things they create things as an example airplanes cannot fly over the Kaaba uh, you know uh, Bird don't do poo poo over the Kaaba, but we have tons of pictures of birds doing poo poo, and the Kaaba is covered by poo poo. Uh, the Kaaba itself was destroyed many times. Many times. They are being silly, but we don't want to be silly like them. When we mention the story of the cockroaches, it's just additional proof that this is no way that can be the God, the God uh, protected house. Because imagine, and look how silly the, the mind of Muslims. They say to you, if you go and read the, the, the comment of the, about the cockroaches, uh, you will see that they are saying the crown prince, because he allow a woman to sing in Saudi Arabia, Allah, he have anger. Okay, let us show let us show you how stupid what you just said. So Allah is angry from the crown prince, so he sent the cockroaches in his house. What about he sent it to the house of the crown prince? <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? So imagine Allah is upset from a Christian prince. He sent the cockroaches against his holy house. Well, Christian prince house is not there. But sometimes I feel like those people they have they have a brain of a chicken. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the Bible speak about Musa's and the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, the country is you know fighting Musa's and his people. They want to kill them. So the punishment was upon the Pharaoh and his people. But here, this is the same people. They are Muslims, and this is the house of Allah. So how Allah punish Allah? Okay, you are angry from the crown prince. You punish yourself. 
So I am I am I, imagine I am angry from my neighbor and I order the cockroaches to come to my house. How silly, how naive, how dummy. I don't know what to say. But what I can do, I mean, I cannot give you. I advise you Muslims to ask Allah to send you the angel Jibreel to do a plastic surgery for you to install a dish of wisdom and faith as he did to Muhammad. And we spoke about this topic before, you remember? Now we go back to our topic. And this is the last time we will answer anyone calling me out of the topic, please. If you call me out of the topic, I'm going to hang up on you because you are not doing us a good. Do we agree, guys? I don't want to be rude, but don't force me to hang up on you. We go back to the topic. So now, can a jinn have sex with my wife? The answer, can a jinn have sex with my wife? Is this hadith is authentic? When a man have intercourse, had intercourse with his wives, and he does not name Allah, the jinn calls around his penis and has intercourse along with him. And here is the source. It says, uh, according, according to, according to, according to, according to, okay, he said, when a man has intercourse with his wife and he does not name Allah, the jinn calls around, etc. They are repeating the same story. All right, let us see some answers. As Hadith says, it and people who are well aware and have experience and the word of jinn know that jinn can have sex with the human both males and females guys is the text clear or it's not small is it too small i don't see an option here too you can read it tell me please if you can read it can you read the still in the in the screen all right uh so it's confirmed between muslims as believe that genies they can have sex with male and female human this is why it says that if you are a man and you sleep in your belly, you are in danger because a genie, he might even do bang bang to you. So if you are a man, you better sleep in your back. Now, if you are a female, I feel sorry for you because you have two places to cover. You have the front and you have the back. So I do not know how you can sleep. I guess you have to make yourself between two boards of wood one in the, from the front and one from the back and you sleep in your side this is the only way you protect yourself from shaitan or genie to do bang bang to you all right and obviously the one who teaches such a teaching he must be a prophet of god i mean how muhammad he knew this unless he is a true prophet of god think about it think about it or call a friend in case you do not know how to think about it all right do we have any Muslim here? He have any any statement? Wanna say? Any Muslim? Who is a Muslim have uh, some knowledge to share with us? And even in some cases, I like it when they say in some cases, not all cases, some cases. I mean, here there's uh, some kind of wisdom. <laughs> and even in some cases, it is reported that a jinn and the human married <laughs> oh boy <laughs> i mean this is what is missing i'm going to sign in a dating website for a genie females maybe i can find a genie with a wife 
because a genie wife is better than a normal human wife. She can go inside the bank, bring me all the money I need, and we, that's it. And if I take her vacation, I will not pay for her ticket because simply she is invisible. The airline will not even see her. And not only that, you know, uh, if you are a drug dealer, you can marry a female genie because she can smuggle all the drugs you want through any country you wish. I mean, man, that is the real marriage. By the way, guys, uh, many of you asked me why you're still uh, single. How you know that now I don't have a wife, but she is a GD? How you know? <laughs> hey, my wife, can you bring me some tea? Hey, by the way, I don't see her, but I see the tea coming. Yeah, uh, can you put it in this table here? Where are you? Are you are here? Okay, where? Okay, I know I feel you. All right, all right. My wife is a genie and she is invisible, and this is how I enjoy her beauty. Invis invisible. You have invisible lips. That's wonderful. So beautiful. Thank you, husband. Uh, she talk. She talk too, and uh, she fart. <laughs> yes, by the way, G genie they fart too. In case you do not know. Genie, they fart. By the way, in case you do not know, genie is a shaitan too. Shaitan is one of the genie. If you go in the hadith, you will see here. Muhammad, he claimed that each time the Muslims, they pray, the shaitan genie, he fart. <laughs> And for sure here you will notice the amazing wisdom of the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him and the clear proof that he is a true true prophet from Allah otherwise how he can earn such an amazing knowledge about farting normal people cannot do that and cannot reach out to the farting knowledge deep to the ass of genie so here you will notice the Prophet May Allah bless him and pray on him. When Shaitan hear the call to the to the prayer, he turns his back and here look at the Prophet how amazing he is into the details. He didn't say Shaitan he fought. No, he said he turns his back. I don't know how many of you watch a movie and you see a bunch of rude, dummy, garbage, trashy people turning their ass to somebody and taking off their pant. This is exactly what shaitan is doing. So when shaitan he hear the Muslim saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, shaitan he turn his back to fart at Allah, and he break the winds, which is very strong. And actually, I heard that most of the hurricane is because of the fart of shaitan. Now, if you are telling me that this is cannot be true, my friend, you are opposing the knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Who the Muslim they say that a very well known person, his name is George Bernard Shaw, said if the Prophet was exist today, he can solve all the problem of the words while he's drinking his coffee. But by the way, we cannot find where George Bernard Shaw he said that. Bernard Shaw he said the opposite about Muhammad. The Muslims always fabricate stories one day christian prince will die and they will say christian prince he converted to islam a minute before he died and he said shahada i bear witness that shaitan fart when he hears the name of allah i bear witness that shaitan he have sex with female muslim women i mean just wait anyone died they say to him he convert to islam before he died now here we notice that the prophet muhammad is a very very highly intellect and educated his knowledge is not about mankind only but he have a phd in farting and the connection between religion and farting maybe it's hard for you as a person who don't even have high school but for us arab who they are illiterate do not know how to write how to read we can teach you wisdom Here we can make a very, very strong connection between the two occasions. 
there's two occasion here happen I'm going to explain for the slow one and I assume that 99% of you because you are not Muslim you are slow sorry to say so you are Christians funny Christians <laughs> one plus one plus one plus one equal to one <laughs> Christians and they're crazy people so what happened here in the front of us is amazing discovery let us see it is truly truly amazing the Muslim he say Allah Akbar Allahu Akbar Shaitan in return he said is my uh, no, no sorry this is not doesn't say that he said answering by farting and that is scientifically proven to be true who in the world can deny such a wisdom why you need even to read the gospel of john or the gospel of luke or mark or in reading the words of jesus christ here this is the wisdom this is the man this is the man we should listen to i mean you guys are really crazy you are leaving such a man away from you how you can live your day how you can enjoy your life how you can enjoy your marriage Brothers and sisters, you are missing a lot of knowledge. Somebody is saying to me, call Zachar Naik, and I cannot resist the temptation of calling brother Zachar Naik, for he is the person of knowledge. Brother Zachar Naik, he will never answer the phone unless it rings three times. Assalamu alaikum. I told you, I told you one thousand times, don't call me. Uh, well, brother, I have a question for Christian Prince, leave me alone. I am sick of you. I told you one minute time, I am not the one to answer your question. First, your questions are very three, and they are very stupid, and I'm sick for you. And you are doing sexual harassment. You are calling me after the middle of the night. Uh, brother, but we have a question about very serious topic. What is the question? It's about chemical weapon. Okay, I'm listening now. Sounds very interesting. Did the war between India and Pakistan break up? Uh, no, it's not about the war between India and Pakistan yet. I hope it's not going to happen soon. Uh, but it says that Shaitan, he fought when Muslims say the prayer of Allah. First of all, this is the proven to be true. And this is why if you go around the Kaaba, you smell so bad. Because Satan there, he is using his full energy to fight at his Khan. Because all the Muslims, we have like five million Muslims, they are saying Allah Akbar. And all the Satan there, they are trying to cover the thought of Satan, the thought of Allah, and they are saying, pff, 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 pff. so they, 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 thank you. Oh, so you are saying to me around the Kaaba, because too many people saying Allahu Akbar, there's too many Shaitan, they are responding to them by farting. Absolutely. Uh, are you saying, brother, there is a war between you and the devil? You say Allah? They shoot back by farting. For the first time in your life, you say something smart. I am really impressed, and you are getting better. Absolutely, brother. When Satan he hears the prayer of Allah, he starts farting. And this is proof. If you go to NASA, you will see that even the found that when 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 Adam Strong he went to the moon, he heard the word Allahu Akbar, and he even smelled, and he heard the Satan farting. Well, thank you, uh, Zakir Naik. I, I really appreciate your answer. And I apologize for waking you up. Guys, I say don't call me. Christians, don't call me. I mean, I need to finish this topic. I will finish it tomorrow. We are waiting for a Muslim to call me. And then now we get no Muslims, except Christian. Oh, boy. So if you are thinking that Allah Prophet is not wise, I feel sorry for you. I really, really feel sorry for you. Aren't you now? I mean, we should confess now that the prophet he have knowledge beyond knowledge. 
he have knowledge about the unseen how Muhammad he was able to know what shaitan do when it's come to fart now we go back to the six all right <clears throat> Uh, as I said, there are historical reports. I have read some books, no one can verify them, but they are large in number. Hmm. Let us see if there's any. Okay. Shaykh al Islam. Shaykh al Islam. And the true Imam al Jalal al Suyuti. Jalal al Din al Suyuti. Allah have mercy on them, they said. In his book of on jinn. Ahkam al jinn. There's books about genie. And this is the reference, as you see. The truth. That it is possible for a human being and jinn to have intercourse. My friend, you might wonder why your wife she is not having sex with you. That because she have a boyfriend, he is a genie. The poor you, you go to work, and your wife, she said to you, I will stay home, like, you know, for, you know, yeah, you know. But the fact, the genie is just waiting for you to leave the house. So he will jump in the bed and start doing the, the again, the again, the again, then, then, the again, the again, the again, then, then. And now because your wife, she is comparing between your sex and the genie sex, she finds you very boring. Do you remember, guys, the story of Suleiman? Who have the who have the link? We we shared that before. Who have the story of Suleiman? If you remember Suleiman, when the genie he took his ring, you remember? Suleiman he want Suleiman in Arabic means Solomon, the Prophet Solomon supposedly. Uh, when he went to the bathroom, Allah he gave him you know uh, Suleiman he was uh, controlling the genie. The Quran says even the genie they work for him. Let us refresh your memory a little bit. See, this topic is complicated, my friend. Let me turn the light on. I cannot see anything no more. And my wife, Jeannie, is not here to turn it on for me. She went to do shopping for free from Walmart. <laughs> nobody can see her. <laughs> she filled the card. She get out. Nobody can see her. They see only the card going out by itself. <laughs> this is the benefit of having a female wife, Jeannie. Unbelievable. So... If you remember, <clears throat> Quran speak that Suleiman have control of the genie. Chapter thirty-eight, speaking about the devil, they work. The devil here, by the way, they are genie. They are genie. But just remember that. Genie or devil, devil or genie, they are the same kind. But not every genie is a devil, remember that. Uh, so, Suleiman, he have control to many things. And the control always by his ring. He have a flying carpet, as you see here, in verse number 36, it says, So we subjugated the wind to his service which carried his merchandise wherever he wish. And by the way, to be honest with you, my grandfather, brother, he used to have the same flan carpet. Uh, my grandfather, his name is Ali Baba. And in some countries, they call him Sinbad. All right, true story. So, Suleiman, he have a flying carpet. He controlled the wind. And the wind go under the flying carpet and carry all his no merchandise is not this is a translation it doesn't say 
it says you know if you go into the interpretation you will see it says it carry his equipment his you know uh his horses his uh, army his tents everything everything actually it says that the 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 flying carpet can carry up to 600,000 chairs plus all his equipment of the army and his army which i find it very small because my grandfather his flying carpet carries 700,000 chairs so you notice here that the difference between Suleiman flying carpet and my grandfather flying carpet is almost 100,000, which is obviously a true story. All right? False interpretation. Who is saying that? Who is the Muslim when I call me? Challenge me to show you the interpretation. What false interpretation? Who is? Are you a Muslim, the one who said false, or are you are joking? Do we have any Muslim here? If there's a Muslim here, we, he, he's accusing us we are saying a lie because we can show the reference right now. Okay, let us do this. As long as you are challenging me. But don't forget to remind you guys to go back to where it says the devils build and divers of all kinds. They are divers. Unbelievable. They do snorkeling. Hey, Satan, can you do snorkeling for me and get me some pearls and jewelries from the ocean? Sure, sure, my master. <laughs> okay, we go to chapter 30, 38, verse number 36, and see the meaning first. Give me a second. <coughs> we have too many pages open, so we have to close some. All right. Okay. Now we go to Ibn Kathir. There we go. Chapter, and by the way, Ibn Kathir in English is totally different from Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Let us say uh, Ibn Kathir in English is like uh, fat free. They took all the hilarious stories out, most of it, let us say. So we go to 38. Just to show you, Muslims. Here we go. Chapter 38, verse number 36. We are not choosing something wrong. And then we go here. verse number 36 we start from 34 so you don't say we are making it we are taking it out of context and by the way even in the same chapter speaking that Allah he made Suleiman die and he was still standing on his 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 body was standing you know but he was dead and what happened uh, he was standing and he hold his staff so his wives, his ministers, they keep in, getting in, getting out, and nobody knows that he is dead until the termite they eat his staff. And this is very thing, this normal things happen for us in the Middle East, we as Arab, you know, or or Jews. But anyway, uh, you will notice here in the Bikathir, Muhammad claiming that he got a Afrit. Afrit is another name for genie. And Afrit is something coming from other culture the same creature genie is called afrit uh, and afrit simply is a genie who is very troubling very troubling but he is very fast he's very powerful like he can bring you anything like this like this like fast he's not he is a genie yes but let us say he is the most powerful genie this is why if you go to chapter 27 verse number 39 i think it says that qala ifritu min al afrit from the genie he says i can bring it to you before even you blink your eyes
All right. Let us see the verse so people will not say the Muslim will not say we are making things up. If we go in the Quran. We search. Chapter 27, verse number 39, as you see. And a crafty jinn. What a crafty mean, guys? Somebody tell me in English what a crafty mean. I don't know what a crafty mean. This is just to see uh, if the translation is accurate. What what crafty is? Crafty. What is that? And crafty of the jinn. Crafty. Tricky. Ah, sneaky. I told you he's very sneaky. <laughs> ah, what a sneaky genie. Unbelievable. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Hey. Me. Do you see what kind of genie this genie? And this is the same story, by the way. It's about Suleiman, but in different uh, chapter. This is in chapter of the ends, chapter twenty-seven. So here, uh, if you read uh, uh, to see the story here, uh, where the the bird, the hood hood. Uh, went uh, and he told him I found a woman that she uh, her people they worship the sun mm -hmm. and uh, Satan more than uh, they do a deed etc blah 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 this is the bird who who uh, uh, Suleiman he check him he is a general in his army the uh, Suleiman he have an army of birds okay and they are in ranks so this is like a high uh, rank bird all right, guys. Did I give you a too much information today? Is that too much? Can we handle more, or we take a break? What do you think? Is it too much? Okay. Because I know, like, you know, uh, you see, the, the problem is that when you speak about something, you find yourself speaking about many things, especially if you are a person who have knowledge. You know, you cannot miss something because they are connected, and we want to give you the full picture. But some of us, maybe they cannot really observe all this information. It's all, all new and it's too much stupid, you know. So here you will notice the story, the same story about Suleiman, but it appears in a different chapter. Speaking about Suleiman, when he checked his birds, he found one of them he is missing, and then he said, "If I, I like, why he is absent?" And by the way, all of us in the Middle East, we check our birds and we speak to them. You know, and we have army of birds. Even Allah, He said He have a chapter. It's called the chapter of the elephant. If you remember, in the chapter of the elephant, this is at the end of the Quran. It says that Allah He sent an army of birds to def to destroy the elephants. So yes, birds are army like, like F sixteen of Islam. So when all when uh, the Prophet Solomon he checked the birds, he found the hood hood, as you see here in that in the chapter. It's, it's called him hood hood. This is the name how it is in Arabic. Now what is hood hood? Uh, let me show you what is hood hood. For those who did not know what hood hood is. You know, uh, sometimes some of you they say like you showed us before what hood hood, but always remember there's somebody is in you first time listening, right? So have patience and don't be selfish. Let us search for hood hood, Mister Hood Hood. Okay. This is the hood hood, which Suleiman he check out and he found him missing, General Hood Hood. And obviously, <clears throat> I think they they choose him for such a job because he obviously by the look he looked like a general. <laughs> I mean, look at this man. Glory to God who created you, little bird. 
very beautiful but the Muslims they copy from all nations all generations you know fairy tale stories about that this is a bird who is uh, uh, very unique and he is according to the Islamic scholars he was the minister of irrigation his job is to fly and to find uh, uh, water under the ground actually I saw an article saying that scientists they found that some birds they can they have a special x-ray vision what is that is about I mean they try to make anything to be perfect about their profit in the in the interpretation there's a guy he was saying uh, for about the hood hood uh, he said well how come if the hood hood he can find water under the ground how come if we put some seed under the sand he cannot see it so we have to make it seen in order to make a trap for him you know what I mean then Ibn Abbas said to him aren't you afraid that Allah will strike you for saying that <coughs> <laughs> the guy he came okay if if this bird can see under the ground if there's water how come if we cover the seed with some sand he cannot see it so we have to keep the seed always in the top of the sand so we can trap him when they when they make a trap they put the seed in the top they notice that if the seed is covered the bird will not see it so how you say to me he can see what is under the ground but yet he cannot he cannot see the seed which is under the, the sand so Ibn Abbas threatened him he said to him aren't you afraid that uh, uh, Allah will strike you for saying that the guy he said I seek burden from Allah I will never say that again all right so here we notice in this story <clears throat> That when he did check the birds, he did not find the hood hood, and he said, "I will punish him severely, or cut his throat." Then, the, to make the story short, the bird he came back and he said, "I found a nation. They have a queen, and they have a very beautiful queen. Uh, and by the way, she have no hair in her legs, according to the interpretation, and she have a very magnificent, magnificent throne. Um, and her people they worship the sun." Uh, uh, they, uh, you know, they don't worship Allah, blah 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 blah, etc. And then Solomon he said, We shall see if you speak the truth or you are a liar. All this conversation is happening between who? Between Suleiman and his bird. Are we following? All this conversation until now is between the bird and Suleiman, that bird. And then uh, Suleiman he said, "Give me, give me a proof in this matter, like something to make decision." You know, Suleiman he need from his assistance to give him a proof. You know, what do you what do you say? What I should say? What should I should do? All right. Uh, you know, he don't know what to do. Like what did, what is decision? Uh, he he should do, and then uh, they were suggesting to him things. So when when the in in voice come to Solomon, he said, "Do you wish uh, to increase my worth? Yet that God has given me is better than what He has given you. No, be." Gra gratified in your present go back to them we shall soon come with our armies which they will not be able to face here we go so they might want to do jihad because those people don't believe in Allah uh, we shall drive them out of the land okay and then then he said uh, to the to his assistants oh you nobles is there anyone who can bring me her throne before they come to me in submission? 
here you see the genie duty this is a very this is a freak this is a very special genie he is very tricky and he's very fast look what he said a crafty genie I will bring it for you rise from your seat for I am a strong and trustworthy I will bring it before you rise from your seat which mean before even you move your ass I can bring you that to here this is how fast he is are we listening guys this is how fast this Afrit is Afrit, yeah Afrit. I mean and you are telling me that the Prophet is not all knowledgeable and Allah book is not scientific this is Afrit, mr. Afrit. Uh, let me see if I can find you an image for Mr. Afrit because Afrit he have a special image too. You want to see Afrit? Let us see. Afrit. Where is the afraid? I see only image of uh, genie, normal genie. I want to see the afraid. Uh, if any of you remember, like there's a movie when there's like a a, a, a candle. Like you wipe your hand over it and then Afrit come out. You remember? This is Afrit. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find. I cannot find and Google really anything about it to show you. Hmm. But anyway, I think you get the idea. He's like a powerful a giant uh, uh, creature, and uh, always he is naked. He is bold. Uh, not totally naked. He have like a panty, you know, and uh, he is bold. And he is very huge, but yet he is very powerful. Oh boy, I cannot find anything. Weird. Usually I can't find really. Mm. No luck. But anyway, I mean, I think you guys, you got the idea. Oh, what I find just a normal. He is a genie, but he is different kind of genie. Uh, uh, like like this. If you, uh, this, this is always how, how the Muslims uh, actually, uh, this is uh, supposed to be a person he present Afrit in, the, in, a, in a Muslim movie. This is how the Afrit come to him. So the Afrit is a bald guy. He have a mustache like this, and he is huge, very huge. All right. True story. Anyway, so we go back. So be careful that your wife she will not sleep around with the Afrit. He is bald. Oh, I hope I hope Sam Shamu will not hear me now. <laughs> so he have a he is bald, but he is a huge to the point like he is really a giant, and he have a big mustache and a beard, and he put his arms around his chest, and he say in Arabic, Shubik Lubik. Abdak bin Idik, which mean uh, I just I I did I put my arms around myself and I surrender to you, Master. 
let me see if I can find the Shubek Lubek thing. Maybe if we search for that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we found it. Here is the Afrit. Now you get the idea. So you wipe this uh, uh, the scandal, and then the afrit he will come out, and he's so big and so so huge. All right. Uh, let us show you another picture. Uh, here, like this is as a human in the movie. Ho 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 ho. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> oh boy, should be club big. Oh boy, this is Islam, my friend. I am not even adding a word. This is Islam. You like it, you don't like it. What I can do? I mean, this is Islam. It's embarrassing. It's stupid. But pff, what I can do? Should be club big. Hmm? Yeah. And uh, you know, this is. Uh, full of uh, old legion stories and etc you know like you find uh, a candle you ask the candle to uh, the genie come out from it and you ask him for a favor so the the afrit is the one the quran is speaking about you know this is the afrit hmm? Oh, please don't say it is a story. Show respect to the to, to the book of Allah. What are you talking about? You people are okay. Aren't you afraid that the crafty genie can come to you right now? Do you know how many of you today, tonight, you will get punished for making fun of the crafty genie? Let me tell you what happened to me because I made fun of a crafty genie just last week. I made fun of a crafty genie. And I went to my kitchen. I found a crafty cake. I ate from the crafty cake. And then after I ate the crafty cake, I feel like I needed to eat from a crafty watermelon. I ate from the crafty watermelon. I felt like I want to eat some cooking. So I cooked. I cooked a, cra I, I cooked a crafty uh, uh, food. So since then, actually, I'm just doing a crafty stuff. And this is a punishment for those who believe in those things. Hmm? So you better be careful. <laughs> and yes, he can play with your anus too, as the prophet he said. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, we go back to our uh, our story. <clears throat> uh... We have a Muslim here trying to call us. Let's... <clears throat> well, I don't know if you are there, answer me. If not, feel free to call. So as you see, Islam is nothing but a collection of fairy tale stories. We continue here. Hello, brother Christian Prince. Praise the Lord. Hey, my friend, how are you? I'm I'm doing great by the grace of God. How are you? I'm all right. So I understand that you are an ex-Muslim, right? Yes, brother. All right. What do you want to say to us, uh, my friend? I left Islam. Yeah, uh, 2010, I left Islam. Okay. Uh, it has been almost nine years, and God has been faithful to me. So I just have uh, I have been uh, watching uh, some of your uh, videos, and, and uh, the way you are exposing uh, Islam is really, uh, you know, uh, we uh, I got the opportunity 
My friend, I hardly can understand you. Sorry, I hardly can understand you. I Say again. I have some doubts and I just wanted to ask you. You have doubt about what? Hello? Uh, I have a few questions. Can I ask you? Okay, about what? Is it about our topic? Uh, if God is an omnipotent God, sorry, hello. You know, I cannot really hear you. Maybe you God can give me. God is an omnipotent God. Uh, can you? My friend, uh, no, my friend. No. Okay, let, sir, let, us, let us let us let us make it this way. Listen to me on YouTube. If you have something to do with the topic for now, ask me. If not, save it until we finish, and you can ask me. All right. And your voice is very bad. I can't hear anything. Let us continue here. So the truth that it is possible for a human being and jinn to have intercourse, and uh, a, a, a Thalabi mentioned in the tafsir. That the meaning of oh, Iblis. I think he did not hear me. Hello? Can you hear me now, brother? All right. So, what is your question? Uh, the Bible says that our God is an omniscient God. He knows everything. Is on his what? He's, yeah, he knows everything. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, he knows everything. Hmm. But uh, when he knows that Adam and uh, Eve are going to commit the sin, then what is the point in uh, uh, creating the human beings? Mm. What is the point of creating the human being? First of all, he yeah, he, 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 knows that he created. When, when no. been... Yeah. Well, yeah. You see, yeah. if I create you, if I create you, and I know what you would do, it still it doesn't mean there's no point because at the end of the day, uh, God He did not mm. create us to commit sin. It is us who choose to commit sin. So even though you commit sin, still He mm. He have a plan for you that if you even if you do so. Still, he will save you because this is what this is what Christianity is about. That okay, God he knows that you are a sinner, and God you know that you will commit sin, but God did not create you to commit sin, but you choose to do yeah. so, no problem. But then still, you are not done, you know. God, because he loves you, he yeah. he you know, he give a chance for those who like to be saved to be with him, even though they yeah. are committing sin and they commit sin okay. before. If they repent and they accepted the Messiah, they are welcome to be uh, forgiven and to be in His kingdom again. Mm. So okay. no, knowing you know, if I know, like I say, mm. uh, you, you are a person who be loved by your father, and your father he will mm. send you to school, and he knew in the school you will do bad and good, but that is not yes. a reason not to send you to school. Okay. Right. So, so in the school. Yes. Uh, it, it, you know, it's possible that you will pass, and possible you will not pass. However, mm -hmm. he give you the right to be to pass or not to pass. Mm -hmm. You choose. You want to study hard, you pass. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if I know, okay, let, let us say I know that you will not pass, and then you mm -hmm. you say to me, okay, you are judging me, but you did not even give me, uh, you know, a, a, a chance to try. Mm -hmm. So you judge me be yeah. because because you know. So no, mm -hmm. not because I know I'm going to judge you, because you do what you do. So go, I create you. Go and do what you will do. You have a free will. Okay. Still, you fail, and then I will judge you mm -hmm. for for your failure, not because I will judge you because of my knowledge. Okay. All right. Did I answer you? Yes, sir. All right. Thank yes, you very much for coming. Take care. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Very much. Yeah. Don't confuse about that, because simply God, He is not punishing us. Because okay, he know that I'm going to commit sin. He punished me because I committed sin. If God he punished me because of his knowledge, that is not even fair, you know. Uh, but even though, even if you commit sin, still you get your chance to be forgiven and to come back to the Lord. We go back here. Uh, it was narrated by Mujahid when a man has intercourse with his wife and he does not name Allah. Uh, the jinn calls around his ultra and has intercourse along with him. This is meaning of the saying, the most high, whom neither man or jinn has touched before. 
you see the Quran in chapter 55 verse number 56 and this is what you see in the cover of my book six and Allah in the book six and Allah you will see in the cover I choose a verse where it says uh, it doesn't say really uh, it doesn't say that uh, no genie uh, did uh, touch them it says no genie did have intercourse and broke their hymen inside the vagina it didn't say uh, touch them what is the word touch them what touched them Lam yat muthahun, lam yat muthahun, which means no genie or man did have intercourse with them and made them lose their virginity. Now you will see it in the screen how it says that verse exactly as we are quoting the 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 scriptures from the Quran, or let us say the funny uh, statement of Muhammad. So you will notice there that there's nobody broke their their the the skin of virginity inside their vagina. So the God of the Quran, and now he mentioned that, which proved that the genie and man, they share the same vagina. Genie and man, otherwise how he's saying, and that's why they are using this reference, otherwise how Allah, he says, that those women in heaven, Allah, he promised you women, who no genie and no man have intercourse with them, unless genie can have intercourse. And this is very logical to say that the Quran is saying that as a proof of their uh, the logic. Then he says, uh, Ibn Abbas said, uh, Ibsen's uh, ah, the Muhannathun simply are the geese. The geese are the sons of the jinn. So what happened that when you have sex with your wife and a genie you have sex with your wife and then you have a child, this is not your child. This is a child of a genie and look like he is going to be a gay according to the uh, according to Islam so if you see somebody he's a gay according to Islam not according to me he is a son of a genie all right and I think this is logical is it <laughs> oh boy <sighs> Uh, and yeah, like I see somebody he says, is that mean all of us are gay? Because according to this, if we don't say the name of Allah when we have intercourse, and your father and my father did not say the name of Allah before they have intercourse, that's mean all of us are, are gay. <laughs> but we are not. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. You know, I think one day I'm going to die from laughing. I mean, people die from stress. And by the way, what I do is very st stressful. I like, I get a lot of death threat, etc. But I find it very funny, and it's very, it's fun. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel any stress. By the way, I feel like tired. Sometimes my eyes is burning, looking too much at the screen, um, and it's a challenging. You know, like you go and uh, uh, you challenge everybody. Who wanna call me? I mean, this is a big challenge. You know, it's it's not easy. Not everybody can do it. Who dare? So it, it brings stress to you if you are not confident. But I have a very and a lot of confidence of my Lord first and, and my myself as knowledge. And when I read about Islam, even though I did read those stories a thousand thousand times, still they made me laugh because it's the most stupid, hilarious. I mean, how a human being go crazy that that, that far? You see, I don't think donkeys they have that such a thing in their books. If they have books, I mean, this is really beyond stupidity. So the the the, the gays are the sons of the genies. Hmm? Anyway, it must be true. By the way, if there is any gays listening. Do you feel like you are half invisible? Because if you are half a human, half genie, then you should have the power of the genies. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Allah and his messengers forbid that man have intercourse with his wife during her menses. Uh-huh. Let's see, let's see the reason here. 
when he does shaitan is there before him and then she may get a breath net and will give a birth to a gay muhannathun muhannathun in arabic here this is mean gays so the reason the prophet he forbid you from having sex with your wife uh when she have her menses because simply if you do shaitan will be waiting for that moment this is his choice this is his chance now to do what to have sex with your wife and make your make your wife a bread net from him this is why actually in the quran it says to shariko home uh, But shaitan is going to share with you chapter 17 verse number 64 he is going to share with mankind their money and their kids do you see it mislead any of them you may with your voice attack them with your uh, uh, cavalry and soldier uh, uh, soldiers on feet share their wealth and children's with them if you go and read the interpretation they say this is what it's about shaitan he sleep with your wife when you are having sex with her if you are not being a good believer and then shaitan he will make your wife a bread net from him all right <clears throat> We, we can we respond to him what a guy want to debate me C call me and what I can do more if you want to debate me call me my friend don't call me now let me give me a second let me get, get some water <clears throat> give me give me a minute until I come back <clears throat> All right, you can call me my friend if you want, and don't forget to bring your afrit with you. You need your afrit today. Are you there, Mr. Muslim? Who want to debate me? All right. We are waiting for you, my friend. Are you going to call or no? Okay, obviously he's not serious. Uh, so as you see here, this is where it's coming. They believe that Shaitan he shared with you. And by the way, uh, uh, we showed you before that Shaitan uh, when Allah he kicked out shaitan from heaven he kicked only one shaitan so the Muslims how the Muslims today they believe that the shayateen which means Satan's the Muslim do not believe in one Satan they believe in Satan's 
so the big Satan his name is Iblis and obviously this is something taken from other belief so there was a question about how Iblis if he is the one who was kicked out of heaven have children after that did he have a wife can he have sex the answer the Muslims they came with the answer that Allah when uh, when he created shaitan he created for him a penis in the right side of his leg and a vagina in the left leg let me show you the reference Because you know, most of them they might say we are making things up. You know them. This is a Muslim website, Islam Fatwa, Fatwa Islam Web .net. It says here, Hell, please. Actually, let us see if we can translate. Give me a second. If we can use Google translation, which will make it easier for us. Okay, we post the link as it is and we open the link using Google Translation. Uh, they are asking here, the translation is not too much accurate. The offspring of the devil, fatwa number uh, 113.661. The offspring of the devil and the way they get it, which means how the devil he got offspring. Answer, praise be to Allah, blah, 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 blah. It has been proven, etc., that shaitan, he can have a spring, okay? So it's proven, proven. This is proven, my friend. Okay. Uh, Allah Messenger, he said, don't be the first to enter the market, not the, the, the last, because shaitan, he lay, eggs, lay his eggs there. And here they continue saying, Sheikh Al-Amin, etc. I mean, I hear this thing that appear on the screen. Um, Allah created for him a right male in his right thigh. Do you see it? I'm just using the, the Google city translation. Allah created for him a male, which means a penis, in his right thigh. And in his left, he created for him a prostitute, not a prostitute, a vagina. <laughs> it's funny, Google translation, vagina became a prostitute. So he would do F this with that. And then he will lay down 10 eggs every day. And from every egg, there is 70 shaitan and shaitana uh, devil come every day. All right. So as you see, this is what the Muslims believe. That shaitan, the first shaitan, Iblis, he was created with a penis in the right leg and a vagina in the left left leg. So when you want to have sex with himself, he just shake his legs. I mean, how lucky you are, man. <laughs> Brother, Islam is a pure science and there is no fiction there. I mean, who, how in the world 
how in the world you, you you can deny Islam what are you waiting for what's wrong with you I think you guys you have a mental issues after all this amazing knowledge you're still not accepting Allah you don't want to say Shahada I really really feel sorry for you and it's happy yeah it's what it's been proven <laughs> Yeah, I like it when he say it's been proven. <laughs> it's been proven, brother. It's pro it's been proven. <laughs> oh boy, <clears throat> it's been proven. It is been proven. I mean, how more proven we need to do for you? Yes, it's have been proven. Do you see it in the beginning? It's have been proven. <sighs> no comment. No comment. Anyway, guys, I think it's time for me to go for today. We'll try to continue tomorrow. What do you think? Um, I feel hungry. I did not eat since yesterday. We can continue the same topic tomorrow if you want. But as you see, this religion is really stupid. And you cannot really uh, be a person who have a, I don't know what kind of uh, education you have, how how small, how big your brain is. I mean, at the end of the day, God, he gave us a brain. And it's going to be very silly of us to be silly and to be stupid. You see, people, they decide to be stupid by their own decision God did not create you to be stupid but if you choose to be stupid I mean it's your choice and in order to believe in such a garbage you have to be literally suffering from you know something you you find yourself what it is there is no way any human being he have a little intelligence he will believe in such a garbage you believe in it it's your fault not my fault I did my part I'm showing you the knowledge which maybe it's going to take you tons of years if you want to study by yourself to find it to connect the dots to put all the information together I'm showing it to you easy um, we never say something without showing it in this in the screen even sometime it did not take me time and too much effort to, to find reference uh, especially we we speak about religion everything in it uh, written in different language and I have to find it for you in English so you, so you can understand and you can see and you can believe that we are not fabricating or saying or making things up. But after all what we showed you, if you are a Muslim and you are listening, do you think really this is from God? Be honest with yourself. This is cannot be from God. So I want to say thank you for everybody for being with us and thank you for those who made donation. We appreciate your support. And... Uh, we pray that tomorrow we will be able to do a live broadcast. Don't forget to subscribe so we can learn more and we can enjoy the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is a joy, my friend. Stupidity is a curse. So don't curse yourself. It's a curse upon yourself by yourself. That's what a stupidity is. To believe that God is going to provide you vagina that because you decide to curse yourself and to became to become a sex slave God in heaven he is not a vagina vendor even God when he created Adam he created Adam and Eve not Adam and 72 Eve's if we are going back to heaven where we came from so it doesn't make sense that this God he is going to bring me not only back to zero he will bring me to be worse he will bring me to be a person who is addicted to sex and i don't see women as something i love women are created as the same as men from the man actually the bible called them both adam so the woman is not created to be used the women to be created to be a partner within ourself from my kind not from different kind so the God who made a woman a sexual toy 
cannot be God and remember that the woman is your mother and your sister not only a woman you want to sleep with and if you don't respect your mother I think you have no respect for anything around you in life unless your mother was a very bad woman and then I understand but that is not what we are talking about I want to say thank you again may the Lord bless you and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and this is a Christian Prince with you saying good night bye-bye